Hello everyone, my name is Doomfish, and in today's video, we are going to be building what you see behind me, which is a villager trading hall. And it's pretty compact. This design is made for just as small of a design as I can make it, and uh, something that would be easily repeatable in a lot of steps. So here, I have 14 villagers, sort of arbitrarily chosen. And they're able to, you know, access their workstation. Um, and they shouldn't be able to access any other workstations. So you'll be able to get a lot of trades out with these guys. Because they'll constantly be resetting them at their workstations. And behind me is a zombie named Carl. Hello, Carl. And he has got a sword. And basically what this design does is anytime if I ever want a less expensive trade... Uh, like, for example, this guy, if I, for some reason, wanted to pay him less coal for an emerald, all I would have to do is hit this note block up here, and you can see behind him that piston extends, and the zombie walks in, and he will convert him into a zombie villager. Easy as that, and once he is a zombie villager, he can be, this uh, note block can be hit again, the block will come back behind him, and all it takes is a splash potion of weakness and a golden apple, and you will be cured, and your prices will be a lot, a lot cheaper. So, uh, the tutorial for this build is coming up. I'll rebuild basically this whole thing. Um, and what you'll need is in this chest. Now, this is what you'll need per every module. So, in other words, the amount of villagers you're going to have, which is your choice, um, you'll scale up what's in this chest um, accordingly. So you'll need three trap doors per villager, um, one workstation, one note block, one observer, one sticky piston, around six blocks, uh, give or take, it depends, it might be more if the villager is placed on the side of your trading hall, and two white carpet. Um, in addition, you'll need a source of villagers, uh, either like a local village or a villager breeder, which there are a lot of other designs that you can get for a villager breeder. Um, you'll need one zombie, and you'll need one zombie not per villager, but for your entire trading hall. And you'll need a sword of some kind to give him, I would recommend it, like, diamond at least. I mean, you could use iron, and you'll need a name tag to make sure he does not despawn. So, let's get into the tutorial for this. So the first step to making your villager trading hall is knocking out a couple of blocks underneath um, where you want your villagers to be. So they'll be resting on top of carpets that we put under here. And the amount of blocks you break are going to be how many villagers are going to be in the system. So for this example, we'll do, let's say, six. Um, six is a pretty good amount. I mean, you'll want to decide like how many books you're going to have, or how many librarian villagers you want, um, how many villagers you want to make emeralds, like if you're doing the stick trade uh, with the Fletcher, you might want like two or three of them. Um, for here, we'll just do six, keep it nice and small. And then what you're gonna wanna do is put in the sort of trap doors that are gonna act as barriers so these guys can't get out. What you're gonna do is gonna place two blocks like so, and then crouch, it's a trap door, and then keep on placing trap doors and you're going to need about six of them to get all the way across here. So open them up, and then this creates your sort of walls where the villagers are going to be. And the reason why, uh, by the way, we place these double carpets here is because any mob that stands on double carpets, um, they won't like pathfind anywhere. They'll just stay pretty much completely still. Even if there's like open space around them, um, like for example in the old hall we built over there, um, once we open up the back, technically the villagers are able to walk out. Like, this guy could walk out. You see, he kind of, like, thinks about it. Um, but he just stays there, and he'll always stay there because of those double carpets. Close that back up. All right, so once you have these basic dividers in here, what you're going to want to do is place some blocks in a C shape, like so, left side. And then you're going to want to go to the other side, do the same thing. It should just only be five blocks and sort of a C shape facing towards the front of your design here. Uh, then you're going to want to go to the back, and right behind these trap doors, on this block right here, uh, you're going to want to place a sort of barricade all the way behind it, and then you'll do the same thing 
on the top here with six blocks going all the way across. And the next step, using trap doors, place them on the top of these blocks that you just placed. Don't do that. Place them just like so. And then flip them up. And the next thing is place some trap doors right on the front of these trap doors that you already placed. Like so. And you can leave them just like that. So when you're done with this step, it should look something like this with trap doors on the top, sides, and bottom here. And then stone in shape like this on both sides, like so. And then two lines, one in the back, one in the front. And it sort of gets like a, a staircase shape right here. So now that we've got our basic framework in here, uh, we're pretty much ready to start putting in our villagers. And so what we're going to want to do is put in our first uh, workstation in the first slot on the right here, or on the left, doesn't really matter. Um, and then we're going to want to sort of prepare our spot for where our villager is going to go. So as you see, I've got this guy in a minecart, which is a, a setup you might use if you want to sort of efficiently move these guys in. And then all I'm going to do is make a little box around here. Now this is all temporary, so don't worry about making it perfect, but pretty much just filling in all of the corners here and making sort of a 3x3 three three rectangle with a space in the middle. Um, and then sort of leaving a way for him to get in. So we've got our little guy here, and we're going to put some rails in right here. And you can do this whatever way you want, but the point is you just need to get these guys into these slots. And this is a way that I found is probably the easiest. So you knock them in here, and then you can sort of get rid of all of this setup you have. Just break all of these blocks, they're all temporary. And then sort of box them in so he can't go anywhere but down. Which is where he wants to be, so that's good. And then we just aim for the corner of the minecart right here, click it, and he falls right in. And then you can break all these temporary blocks, and you should be good to go. Now, one thing you're going to notice here is that I, I'm pressing right click and I can't sort of, I can't put a block over his head. And that's a bit of an issue. So, and that's because he's resting on this carpet right here. So what we're going to want to do is grab ourselves a sticky piston. Again, this is going to be temporary. And a block of redstone. And this way, we can sort of push the block into where it's supposed to be. So you can put a space one above here, go two up like so, leave a two block space in between, or I'm sorry, a one block space in between, um, just like so. And then you can use a block of redstone, break this piston, uh, and then break all of this, and he's perfectly in place, he's not going anywhere, that's exactly what he wants to do. And then you can just sort of repeat this process for the next step, and build it up again, use another minecart, so on and so forth, whatever villagers you have available. Alright, so now that all of these guys are in place, you can see they're uh, studying their books here. What we're going to do is head on top of this structure here, and just crouch and place some note blocks on top of these trap doors. There's six of them. And then you're going to want to put an observer facing into these trap doors, all of them like so. And then you're going to want to drop down and put a sticky piston facing downwards. And what this will do is, just like in our other example over there, uh, every time we hit this, it'll sort of toggle on or off whether or not this block will be open behind these guys. So for example, if I hit it, and I hit it again, it will sort of open up. And so the reason why you have to hit it a couple of times the first time is because you see these pistons are not um, touching these these blocks right here. So we have to sort of attach the blocks the first time. So you just go along, pressing these, and then setting them back to the closed position. And once all that's done, you can check it by sort of looking behind these villagers, making sure the stone blocks are behind them. And that's going to be it for this sort of part where we can trigger on or off whether or not we want the villagers to be able to be attacked by the zombie. And now that that is all finished up, what we're going to need to do is walk behind our little setup here and sort of make an area where our zombie is going to be. So to do that, we're going to place one block behind this, um, go in you know, a sort of diagonal motion right here, and make a little L shape. Then go our six blocks behind here, 
and then put another L shape here, and then sort of just build it up a little bit. Like so make it two layers high, so you have this sort of long U shape structure, and then just place your stone blocks above it right here on these pistons, and that way the zombie we put in here is not going to burn in the daylight. So now that we have that all finished, the next step is actually put the zombie in here, which is going to be a little difficult. So what you need the zombie to do, first let's just spawn one in. No, okay. <laughs> spawn one in that isn't a baby. Oh, help, there we go. Let's pick up that rotten flesh too, we don't want it getting in the way of anything. And what you're going to want is a grown zombie, and you're going to want him to be able to hold items. So let's take a little trial and error, because not every zombie can actually pick up items. You see this guy is not doing anything with the sword I just threw to him. I don't know why, it's a perfectly good sword, it's a great sword, it's made out of netherite. Um, so you kind of need to have some trial and error here to find a zombie that'll actually be able to hold the item, because it won't work unless you give him a sword, and even if it did work with a sword, or without a sword, you really want him to have a sword, because the process is a lot slower if he's just hitting him with his basic fists. So I'm just going to repeat this process a few times, and in your survival world, you would be looking for just a zombie that would be able to pick up any item. Alright, so after a couple of tries here, we've got our zombie. As you can see, he's got the netherite sword in his hand there. And so what we're going to need to do... So technically, these guys shouldn't despawn, but just in case, um, throw a name tag on him, and he definitely will not respawn. So I've got this one. He is now Carl. And this pretty much completes our setup here. This is all the essential parts you need, obviously you can sort of make it look better as you go. Um, but just as a test of the system here, what you can do is sort of get all of these, open this area up, and look at that. You already gave him a hit, and there we go. He's already been converted, and sort of go along and do the same thing, and it works like a charm. So one thing you're going to want to be careful of as you're converting these zombie villagers is you don't want to go too far away from where you are while there's still zombie villagers. You sort of want to babysit them a little bit. Because since they're no longer passive mobs and they're instead hostile mobs, they do have a chance to despawn if you go far enough away. So you just want to sit by these guys and make sure they don't leave. And just as a test here, um, you can grab a golden apple. Because that's what you need to cure them, and you can also grab a splash potion of weakness, like so. Doesn't matter what kind of weakness, either kind of works. So now that all of these guys have been thoroughly zombified, um, there's a slight flaw with this that um, has a really easy fix. Uh, so these blocks right here, that were once full blocks of stone, um, if you place them with a stair, like so, so it's pointing sort of upside down, um, that will prevent it from whenever you sort of convert a villager and you have this space open. If the zombie were to walk in there, into that space where that villager is, and you were to close it, like here's a good example, close it like that, um, if it was a full block, he would be suffocating there. But since this is just a stair, um, he will be fine and he won't take any damage, because you really don't want this guy dying. It's a, pretty tough to get him into the spot right here. And now that all of these guys have been zombies, uh, we can sort of cure them up. So all you need is a splash potion of weakness. And sort of, if you throw it right, I'm not sure if I can do it, like so. You want to get as many of them as possible. And then when you right click on them with the golden apple, you'll see they start shaking. It's really loud. And after about, like, five minutes or so, they should be cured up. So you just have to stay in the vicinity and wait for that to happen. And yeah, I'll be back once this is all said and done. Alright, that'll just about do it. That was the last guy that needed to be cured up. So you can see now that their prices have decreased quite a bit. You can see you need a big reduction in the amount of emeralds you would normally pay. Same thing here, from 44 to 19 for Fire Protection 3. And then, if you want multi-shot, um, all the way down to one emerald book. All the way down the line, you can see the same thing has sort of happened. And just to compare that, you know, your normal villager, he's got all the normal trades, 36 emeralds is a lot higher. And if you ever feel like these prices are a little too high, like 19 emeralds for Fire Protection 3, you can repeat the process and have this guy walk in. Oh, that was quick. Nice job. Nice job, Carl. Employee of the month right there. 
and you can repeat the process as many times as you like, and the price will keep on going down and down. And so with that, I think we're about done here. And if you liked the video and have watched to the very end, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next one.